like this or if we did we kind of glossed over it so I'm going to spend some time talking about uh, uh, drawing on the canvas and uh, this reinforces um, some of the other notions that that we talked about um, in class namely um, gestures so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this works and then we can play around with it a bit all right we can play around with it for two good reasons one is is I played around with this to, to draw on the canvas and I and and the things I drew on the canvas helped me see exactly what was going on in the program so we'll, we'll try to kill two birds with one stone all right this is the application let me make sure everything is set up right with this All right. The application is a find the flag game, and it's not terribly exciting, but it does. It, I think it's a good example because it's fairly simple, yet it does make some good points. So let's go and let's run this application. That's okay. I'm not doing anything yet. <laughs> All right, hide the flag. All right. The way this works is like this. You start out, it shows you the flag. And there's a button to hide it to start the game. And then, oh, these are these lights. Once you, once you hide it, you get to guess where it is and it'll tell you hot, cold, warm until until you find it or give up. Let me rotate it this way. All right, so I click hide the flag and it's hidden. All right, now I get to guess where it is. So I'll guess here, getting warm. So let me try here, getting cold. Here, I'm hot. Here, I'm also hot. Here, I found it. All right, so, you know, simple enough game, but it, it illustrates uh, a, a few points. Then you can hide the flag if you want and and so on. So let's take a look at the code that accomplishes this. Um, if we look at this, they have typical string file. I think all that's in there is the app name. Nothing dramatic there. I don't think they use different size images. Oh, they do. Uh, or actually, different icons. All right. There's only one flag. Okay. Um, the layout starts to get a little interesting because what they do is, as defined in the layout, linear layout, a text view with a label, a button, and then. Uh, he creates a custom view that he puts on it. And the custom view is the game board. Okay, The game board corresponds to this area down here. All right, This area down here. Because if we touch up here, we don't get a, you know, that's not a guess. That's not in play. Only the touches down here count. All right. So that is his custom view. That is a lighter gray area. 
All right. Okay, let's look at the source code. Source code has the main, which gets the ball running, and processes the guess. All right. There's an indicator's enumeration that simply has certain terminology. Oh, certain terminology like bullseye, hot, warm, cold. The main we'll come back to in a minute, but not a lot going on there. Most of the action takes place in the game board. And the game board uh, has a couple of, as a constant for like how close you have to get it to be considered warm, how close to be considered uh, hot. All right. Um, it then has uh, the bitmap, and it, it paints the bitmap, and it paints... Um, the rest of the stuff. Let's um, let's go back and look at the main, and then we'll come back and look at the game board. The main on create again grabs a reference to the game board, all right, and sets a touch listener to the game board of this. This, since this in, uh, implements on touch listener and on click listener, all the code for processing the touches and the clicks of the button. So the two, the two things that are, that are going are touching this, clicking that. So that's the two things that are processed and are handled by, by this. So this class, in addition to being sort of the main class that runs the show, is a class that um, handles, handles the events. So we grab a reference to that. We then set the listener to be this object for the game board, which is the custom view on the bottom. We then grab a reference to the button, and then we set the click listener for the button to this object. So when the button is clicked, on click gets called. When the view is touched, on touch gets called. All right. Right. Right, because it implements that interface. Okay. Any any class that implements that interface is fair game to set as a listener. And what does it mean to implement the interface? Well, to implement a click listener, you simply need to have an on-click method. To implement a touch listener, you simply or yeah, is that yeah, touch listener, you simply need an on-touch uh, method. Um, I suppose this could be the listener for a bunch of other things too, but but that would get into some, uh, you'd have to evaluate what got touched or what got clicked. All right, you'd have to look to see what the view was that got clicked. So you could actually have this handling a bunch of buttons if you wanted to, all right, um, and a bunch of touches, but you'd, you'd have to figure out, again, what got touched, what got clicked. Uh, in this case, it's simple enough because they check it anyhow, yeah. but, 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 uh, but uh, they, they really won't have to because this is the, only the listener for this. Okay, so when we click the button, the button is smart enough to say, all right, um, oops, to, to know if the flag, if, if a game's in progress, in other words, is, is the game started or not. So if the flag, if, if the game is hidden, all right, and the button was clicked, um, or if the game is hidden, the flag is hidden rather, it knows to make the button give up. If the, if the flag is not hidden, then it knows to make the button, the text of the button, say hide the flag. And again, a little bit of sloppiness on that that they don't use the resources for, for that. Um, 
so they'd be stuck with English for that. You know, they, yeah, they they would be better. They'd be better off using a, using a string for that. Yeah. So again, we grab the text view, we clear it out, we grab a reference to the button. If it used to be hidden, we make it not hidden. If it used to be not hidden, we make it hidden. The bang in front of it, the exclamation point means not. All right. Then if we are hiding the flag, we set the text to give up and we hide the flag. Otherwise, we say set it to hide the flag and, and, and execute the give up code, which uh, is on the, um, on the uh, what you call it, on the game board. All right. Yeah, I mean, if it, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's a little confusing. Uh, like this if statement, you, you have to read, if it was just changed to hidden, then do that. Um, if it was just changed to uh, give up, then do that. All right. The touch event then, this, by the way, you know, has the hook in it where this could handle a bunch of different buttons because it looks to make sure right off the bat that the ID of the view that got clicked is r.id.thebutton. So it's checking to see if the button that got clicked was in fact this here button. Of course, in this example, I don't know what else it could be, but again, this allows the possibility to process multiple buttons. If you notice that on click event, when when uh, something gets clicked, it calls its listeners on click event, and it passes itself to it. So that's why the argument is a view. All right. Same idea on the touch bit, but in addition to the view, it passes the event. We make sure we're talking about touching the canvas. All right. We look to see if it relates to pressing on the uh, on the on the uh, on the surface, and if the flag is hidden, it assumes that we want to take a guess. All right, it calls the game board take a guess and passes the x y coordinates of the event. So wherever we touch it, we get the x y events, and then we call that. There's then a case statement to evaluate. If it's a bullseye, if it is uh, hot, warm, or cold. And we set the text and the properties of the text accordingly. So if, we're, if, they're, if they're hot, the text shows up in red. If they're warm, it shows up in yellow. If it's cold, the text saying you're cold shows up in blue. If you found it, it shows up in green. Then it flops the, the flag again, saying that it's hidden. Notice that function calls, uh, or rather returns one uh, an enumeration. So it returns one of those values that are in the indicators. All right. Now let's look at the game board where the action happens. All right. Now. When we make our own custom view, as this is, our game board extends view, the one thing we have to tell the view is how to draw it, right? how to draw this view. What does it mean to draw this view? All right. So therefore, we have to be able to, 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 to give the instructions of how to handle drawing this area down here. All right. All right, there and there it drew it. So we have to have on this a on draw event. All 
All right. That code's commented out because that's what we're doing in part two. Yeah, part two. I, I, wanted, I wanted to run this demo like it was written, and I wanted to show it with the things that I, I put into it for it. All right? So, what does this do? Actually, this should probably be commented out too. Up to here is the code that was in it originally. All right? This does some calculations on, um, let's see, the position of, of the X and Y. The M flag. Yeah, effectively what that does is that, um, that makes it so that the flag can't be like half off the screen. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then we draw the background, which is gray. Now, how do we know the background is gray? Well, we look at it. All right. This is a case of drawing on the canvas. All right. So we're drawing on the canvas. We're doing it in the on draw event. When does the on draw event get fired off? Well, it gets fired off, you know, when the the the, the view initializes, and it will get um, fired off whenever uh, an invalidate is called on it. So when we know something is funny, it'll well, something by something funny I mean something needing to refresh the 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 thing. We we can invalidate the view. The drawing the rectangle is drawing this rectangle here. All right, and it's using the my paint or the m paint um, instance variable, and that paint has a color set to dark gray. So that's how it knows how to make it dark gray. We could make it, you know, any other color we wanted. We could make a red background, but that wouldn't be a good idea. Let's make it a blue background. Rewind. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Set color apparent, yeah. Set color apparently expects a one of the color constants. The set A R G B is what sets the color. And the the, the four uh, attributes are the, the alpha, the opacity, which is zero to two fifty five, uh, and then a red, green, blue. So this should make the background blue. And if we run this, we'll see what we saw before. except the background should be blue. And sure enough, there we go with the blue background. I'm going to make that a little bit darker blue now that I messed this up <laughs> or it doesn't look good on the screen. <laughs> It's funny how it changes colors because it doesn't look that blue in front of me. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's a nicer blue. All right. So associated with the canvas, you can draw things, and it's drawn with whatever the paint, you think of it as a paintbrush, whatever the paint object is, all right, that you're doing when you draw it. So what can we draw? We can draw rectangles. 
We can draw circles, we can draw shapes, we can draw any number of different things. We can draw a bitmap on there, and we can put a bitmap on there as well, which is exactly what we're doing here. All right, yeah. Well, no, it's a bitmap that will, that will, uh, that's, that is this image here, the bitmap. Yeah. All right. Uh, and again, by bitmap, they don't mean uh, a .bmp file in the Microsoft Word. They mean any, um, what do they call, raster image, all right, uh, as opposed to a vector image. All right. So, all the time, we are going to draw the rectangle. So, we're going to draw the blue background no matter what. All right. Then, if the flag is not hidden, and this is probably why they do the switch the way they do, uh, if you remember back to that code. If the flag is not hidden, all right, we're always drawing the background. If the flag is not hidden, then we're drawing the bitmap. What's the bitmap? Well, mbitmap is what we've used to pull in our image from that drawable. All right. uh, and we specify the x and y coordinates. And I am not sure what that null means. Let's hover over it. Um, oh, we can do it with a paint. All right, so we might be able to do things. Um, I'm thinking like, uh, I'm thinking if it is a, um, if it's a transparent uh, background, we might, you might see the, the color through there. Because it's not going to like color. So let's, in fact, let's do that. It's not going to color uh, it. You know, it's not going to color the image, but I don't know. We'll see what it does. Let's make this. set it to black and then let's change this to say my paint let's see what happens when we give a paintbrush to that I keep saying paintbrush but it's a paint object yes, so alright that's what this does. This draws the, the this draws the uh, whole rectangle. This area here, yeah. The other one will draw just the flag. And I've given them different paint brushes. The M paint was what they have, what they have defined as an instance variable. The my paint is what I have defined as a local variable um, that I just did for for the heck of it for debugging. I want to see what happens when I call this draw bitmap and give it uh, a paint object. So let's go and run this. And all right, interesting. Nothing. Oh, I did the wrong. No, I didn't do the wrong one. My paint color RGB. I'm not sure what the bitmap does then. When I draw the, the, the my bitmap, I'm supposed to be able to give it a paint object. And it didn't seem like it changed, no. All right, if the paint contains a mask filter that generates a mask which extends beyond. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to go back to null on that because I don't see what that does. <laughs> All right. So, that's the drawing the canvas. It's either going to draw the canvas and not show the flag or draw the canvas and show the flag. All right. Let's look at the code now that hides the flag. All right. Hide the flag sets the X and Y coordinates of the flag. Sets 
the is flag hidden to true sets the guess to null all right that's something I put in we'll look at that uh, in a minute and then invalidates it and invalidate of course forces a redraw so when we first go into this app that's what we get initially the flag is not hidden so that button says hide the flag we can see the flag when I press this it's going to call the hide the flag button it's going to switch that flag invalidate it so the on draw is going to fire off again except this time it's not going to show the flag which belongs at some XY coordinates all right so if we remember back to our touch event our touch handler what they do to determine if we're warm or cold or hot is we actually draw we don't really draw a rectangle we create a rectangle all right that's around where the flag is hidden all right and again we normalize it as they say so that it doesn't go off the edge of the screen all right and we create this rectangle having a dimension starting at the center point of the flag minus what we define as our close property and then we set the other one with its position minus the closer property so we have two rectangles one of which is is a hundred uh, around it one of which is 50 around it all right actually we're down here we then create a bullseye rectangle that is right on top of where the flag is all right so that bullseye rectangle corresponds to the flag all right then we go and we run our test to see what was hit and we do this through um, simple collision detection all right what we're going to do is we can call for those rectangles and ask the question does a rectangle contain the point where we touched X and Y are the arguments that get passed to this guy and they represent the coordinates of where this got touched all right so if the bullseye rectangle contains that point then we hit it and we set our flags and do our things and invalidate otherwise if the real close rectangle contains that point then we return the indicator saying it's hot otherwise if the pretty close rectangle contains it we display saying it's warm and finally if none of those rectangles contain it we uh, return that indicator saying that it's cold all right that gets returned of course to here and we can do the appropriate thing with the rest of the view based on the game board with whether the game board said it was was touched or not now you you'd, you'd indicated before that a lot of the code was commented out what I did and, and I cheated on this I didn't extract it make a function but I copied this code in the draw event so that we can actually see those rectangles so we can get a sense of how they are and I do this for two reasons one reason is is this helps us understand how that works uh, but it also helps us understand how to draw on the canvas so I I thought well what the heck we'll, we'll do this so I should be able to do this and run it So now when I go and hide it, all right, notice what we have. We have uh, that should be a yellow. Boy, the colors of this are off because that should be a yellow and it looks more like white. And then we have a red one. 
So if I go hide the flag, it hit it like there. All right? And if I touch here, it tells me I'm cold. If I touch here, that method saying, does this contain, does this rectangle contain that point where I touched? Well, we can see, yeah, that rectangle does contain it. So it knows that I'm warm. If I touch the outside of the rectangle over there, it knows that I'm hot. And then finally, if I touch the center, it knows that I found the flag. Now, the way I have this draw, um, the sequence that I did it, it, that's overlaying on top of the flag, but um, again, that's the purpose for this. Let's review drawing that flag. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not the flag, the, the rectangles. Again, I'm setting the color of the paint brush using the RGB. So for the outer one, I am setting it to yellow, which is red and, and green, but no blue. Then I draw the rectangle called Pretty Close, which is a rectangle whose dimensions we set up there, which starts, you know, within a range of, on either side, top and bottom, left and right, of the center point of where the flag is hidden. And again, it's set such that if it's right on the edge, it, it doesn't lop it off. Or, or it doesn't try to extend it beyond the edge of the screen. It, it lops it off right there. Then I go and I set the color to red and I do paint and I draw that. So that draws the red um, thingy there. All right. Now, questions about that? Really, the only reason that code is duplicated is, again, a little bit out of laziness, but I just copied and pasted it as opposed to writing a, a good function. Pardon me? Yeah, it was neat to see that. Right, to see that. That really helped me understand what the program was doing by doing that. And it helps us see how you paint, how, 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 how you draw to a canvas. What the heck is uh, the drawing of the point? Ah, the drawing of the point is going to draw, show us where the guess is. Okay. In other words, I want to draw a white point where I've guessed. All right. Now, I'm going to uncomment out a couple lines of code, but it's not going to work. I say it's not going to work so that when it doesn't work, I don't feel embarrassed because I know it's not going to work. This is an actual problem I had today when I was doing this. And this is sort of like a challenge question if, if you're playing along at home. All right. This is a question of why this doesn't work. So here's what I did. I made a instance variable called point. All right. When I, where is it? When I take a guess, I create a new point. All right. I set the x and y attribute of that point to be the arguments of the take a guess, which is the x and y of where it was touched. So I create a point at that coordinate, at that coordinates, x and y. All right. Now what I'm going to do is at the, where was it? On draw? Yeah. Down here, if the guess is not null, I'm going to draw that point. All right. I'm going to draw that point and I'm going to make the color of the point white. All right. Now we're going to notice it acting buggy. All right. And we'll see if we can explain why it's acting buggy. This really had me scratching my head for a few minutes because it was like, it doesn't seem right, but after I kind of thought about it and observed what it was really doing, then, then the answer became um, a lot clearer. All right, so I think that's everything I need to uncomment. Now, again, it's not going to work, but we're going to go and we're going to debug this. So, let's go. It's not going to show the point correctly. It'll sh Well, you'll we'll see what happens. All right. So, let's go and run this. All right. 
Here we go. Now this might be hard to see, so we'll we'll, we'll have to you have to, to to bear with me. So I'm going to go and I'm going to I'm going to touch over here. I'm going to touch all the way around there, and notice I'm not seeing a point there. All right. Now I'll click hide the flag, and I'm going to go, and I'm not going to see a point. Finally, I'm going to guess the flag. I found it. Let me do this again. Hide the flag. Then I'm going to press give up. When I press give up, it's very hard to see, but the point shows up there. So if I hide the flag, if I press over here, I'm not seeing a point. But, if I give up, I see the last point that I touched. Okay. So, it's recording that point somehow, because it knows when I give up to display that point. And yet, it's not displaying that point when I would expect it to. Alright. Take a second to think that through. Here's where... What's that? We did not call invalidate. Very good. Right. In other words, if you look at this, I had assuming that every time, when I wrote, when I put that in there, I had thought that every time you made a guess, it, it didn't invalidate. It doesn't. It only doesn't invalidate, oh, really, when it needs to. Like, um, for, for a bull, yeah, it only needs to for a bullseye. Because that's the only time, in the original version of the game, that's the only time it needed to refresh it. All right. So, again, if I go in and put invalidate in here, we are back in business. And now if I run it, Hide the flag. There we go. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is it is recording the points as I touch them. All right. All right. Any questions on this? On this example? So, we saw three things that we can draw on our canvas. When do we draw on a canvas? When we make our custom view. All right, so we make a custom view. What we have to do with a custom view is we have to create the on draw. We have to say, well, okay, this is a brand new view that no one knows about. What do you do when you draw it? So, we have to define what we want to draw in that custom view. All right. Um, is, is that what that's, is the spot on an application also? Spot on one. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's, go, on, let's go and pull that one up and, and, and compare it. I have to, I have to remember which, which one that is, but yeah. Let's go in. All right, let's look at this. Not what I wanted. I wanted that one. Well, that's right. Well, let, let's see. Let me take a second to... 
Actually, yeah, creating creating that the 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 untouched right. It created a, a, that untouched had a image view in there. All right, and it created them. The reason it does it this way, the reason this one does it this way, is because it's actually spawning a bunch of these. All right, we're not having you know. In other words, there's not like one flag, right? There's like a bunch of these little guys flying across the screen. All right. So if we look at this, then our main. I'm trying to see this. It contains a high score. It contains the level. Okay, contains the score. All right, got it. And it contains, okay, a linear layout. That's where it's going to put our canvas that we're drawing on. All right, let's look at the spot on application. All right. So, what it's doing, oops, is it is doing all the basic things. It's grabbing a reference to that linear layout uh, at the bottom or that relative layout at the bottom, and it is adding that view, that custom view to that. So again, this in this, the code went and added that view. If you notice what this guy did in it is in the XML, he put that view in. So there, he said that that's the kind of view he wants to use. Whereas here, programmatically, it went and added the spot on view to that particular layout. You know, 601 half does the others as far as I'm concerned. Then the spot on view extends view. And if we look, it has somewhere here. Did I miss that? Well, I'm looking for the on draw. Looking for the on draw on it. I guess they don't they don't override the on on draw. Yeah, so they don't even use the well, let's see. Let's see what add new spot does. Add new spot. All right. Inflates the image to create that, adds it to the list. Randomly decides, set some properties for that. And and adds adds the view, yeah. Adds the view to the relative layout, right? Yeah. So they're right. They're not using a canvas in this one, right? Yeah. It can, exactly. Um. Let's see. One other thing. Uh, again. Do keep in mind all the other things that you could draw. You know, you could draw uh, w the three things we saw are points, um, images, and rectangles. But I think the the next app that we're going to look at, the Doodle app, um, you you like is like a sketch where you draw it. There's I think there's a selector to select like the color of the paint that you want to use and all that, and then you can draw stuff on there. And again, it's going to be kind of similar to this in that it's going to have a touch event. And uh, based on different things, it's going to go and use the paint that you've selected to go in and draw something on that. We could easily adapt it to do things like if you tap on it, draw a circle. If you hold it, draw a square, and so on. Um, question about this. There's no threads in this. 
Um, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking that a that a thread really isn't a separate thread really isn't required for this, simply because all this is is the UI and processing the UI. There's not anything going on in the background. All right. If you think, for example, of your uh, sound toy with the clock especially. Thread for the clock because that's going continuously and then also you want to handle the UI stuff like when you touch it make a sound, when you flick it do a sound and so on. This really doesn't have any long processing that's going on independently of the stuff that you're going in the UI. So uh, actually I had, uh, I had a couple students in my lab last night that are taking this class. One of my students is also in my Monday and Wednesday class, and then, um, oh, I can't remember the guy's name. Pat, thank you. I'm sorry, Pat. Uh, he just stopped in uh, to lab, and we, and we were talking a little bit about threads, and they said that's one thing that they would want me to go over a little bit more. So we'll take a look. At, I'll, I'll dig up some good examples. I wasn't able to get one prepared in time for today, plus I knew Pat was, wasn't going to be here today. So... Um, I will, I will look at doing that. But again, the key thing to remember with the threads is the idea is, is that you, don't, you, you want the UI thread in a position to respond quickly. And nothing in this example, tapping the screen, hiding, showing the flags, is keeping the UI from responding. Whereas, you know, a clock that's running in the background or the animations on those spots as they fly across the screen or whatever, those, have, those would have the potential maybe to, to be a monkey wrench uh, in the situation. Yeah, I guess I, I'm used to Windows, and I think they're, and they have Android too. Right? Okay. I'm thinking maybe they're Android just keep updating, you know, background. Yeah, I, this one, yeah. Only gets, only gets called when you invalidate it, yeah. Yeah, that, that could be. I'm not familiar with Windows, but that was, uh, that was sort of my recollection of, of how that is. But, you know, who knows how accurate that is. I, I could be totally, yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah, I don't know. Um, all right. Trying to think if there is anything else interesting or useful in this example. Um. Well, the only thing I don't understand is mm -hmm. custom, uh, custom. The custom view? Yeah, I mean, how, where is the syntax there? In the, uh, how does that relate to anything? Okay, well. Oh, shoot, where am I? Here, the layout, yeah. Okay. And that's, that's the package name. Okay. Yeah, com.authorwjf.gameboard. So that, that's, that's the name, of, that's the fully qualified name of the class. And so if we look at this, in, our, in that package, there is Gameboard. It's sort of the same thing that, that you do with the other ones, because what is button? What is text view? Those are all class names, right? Text view is a class name, but it's not a class name that we made up. It's a class name that's part of the framework. All right, so we don't have to qualify that. All right, likewise with button. But in this case, we, we do want to qualify it and say, yeah, that's the package that it's in, uh, that's that. So what we're doing effectively, when we, when we define this in XML, essentially what we're doing um, is we're creating an object of that type in our view, all right, um, in, our, in, our, uh, in our main activity. So we're creating that. And what we got to do, though, to reference that is do these instructions here, all right? So we set the content view from that XML file. So that 
brings in the XML file and effectively makes me a text view object, makes me a button object, makes me a one of these objects, the game board Java view object. So that's what this does. At this point, we have on our screen these objects. All right? But this code has no way to, to touch those, no way to reference them. That's why we have to use find view by ID so that we get a hook to it, so that we can grab a reference to that game board object. Because that game board object exists when this gets called, but this has no way to reference it other than to ask, all right, hey, find the thing, you know, within the context that has that as an ID and set that equal to M game board. Cast it to a game board, set it to M game board, then do that, then do that. Um, I, Right. And again, what do we do? Well, what does a view do? A view has an on draw event on it. All right. And again, you know, the image view has an on draw event on it. The text view has an on draw event. Well, these custom views, because they're custom views, we have to make the on draw. All right. Yeah. This extends view. Right. And it overrides the on draw event. Because again, it knows what to do with an image view, right? Because that's built into the framework. It knows what to do with a text view, because that's what's built into the framework. It doesn't know how to draw a game board. So we have to tell it how you draw a game board. All right? And therefore, the canvas is like the canvas on which that view lives. And we're going to paint upon that canvas. And what are we going to paint upon it? Well, depending on what we choose, we're going to paint some rectangles, we're going to paint the flag, we're going to paint all sorts of things. All right? And then that's what we end up seeing. All right? So the key thing when, we, when you define this custom view is that we're likely to want to override the, uh, the on-draw event. The other example, the spot, the spot on one, didn't do it because it was just a container for all those spots. All right, it didn't really have any drawing of its own. But it could have used the same syntax to create. Could use a similar thing, yeah. Yeah. If, for example, we wanted to not animate it, but maybe programmatically, you know, randomize it. You know, those spots followed a certain path going across it. You know, very uh, basic sort of animation, a tween animation, you know. Every frame or, or every iteration through there move forward or backward a little bit, all right? But if you can imagine, if we were building a game, you know, let's say we're building like a Pac-Man game, right? Our ghosts, our little dots, aren't just going to randomly shoot across the screen. Our dots are going to like go after Pac-Man, right? So they're going to have to have some smarts to like know where Pac-Man is and head in Pac-Man's direction. So if Pac-Man moves, they're going to move too. You know, so that would require, instead of just a simple animation between it, some sort of programmatic intelligence that says, hey, move towards where he's moving, you know, and, and you know, and, and, and that way that, that the, the, the game would have some sort of artificial intelligence to try to catch Mr. Pac-Man. Okay, let's see. It didn't exist yet, of right. Right. Oh, right, 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 on the view. Yeah. Yeah, that could be that it, that it uh, wasn't doing it. The one other thing I don't like is uh, just, I don't know why I'm thinking of this right at this minute, but the X and Y of the point, those attributes you can access directly. So they're not private, in other words, X and Y. Which, you know. Yeah, which, eh, you know, the, 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 the purist in me says there should be gets and sets, but in practical terms, probably doesn't matter that much. 
Yeah. That seems kind of silly to make it a function. You're just going to say X. Uh, yeah, exactly. E exactly. I, I guess it's uh, I guess it's how much of a purist whoever <laughs> whoever created that class was. Um, and, and if you're really an OO purist, you would do gets and sets for it. Uh, but again, um, all right. No, that's something online. So I posted the link to it. So if you look in the in the lectures uh, lecture section, I've been doing that lately when I've been using stuff not out of the book. I've, I've been posting the link in there and. Uh, and then discussing it. The one other topic that uh, one of the students said they wanted discussed is uh, inheritance. So we'll probably, I'll try to think of an example of inheritance. I'm uh, not really sure what that was. Man, what can we do? Maybe we can make, maybe we can make a, I'm trying to think. Because I'd like to inherit one of the basic Android views, for example. Maybe we extend the image view and like have an image with a caption associated with it or something like that. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example that, that we could use to demonstrate uh, inheritance for that. Right. Right. Yeah, it's funny, and it is, it is a challenge uh, to think of examples, or even to find examples, that are like the right size to like cover in a class. So, you know, I wouldn't want to necessarily spend five class periods over an example, but then again, I want something that's not going to take 15 minutes to go over either, you know. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll give that some thought. I'm not sure if we'll do that next time or, or what. Yeah. But, Right. Well, a lot of times there's an abstract class involved, but not necessarily. If, if yeah, if something's a specialized uh, of it, um, you know. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of times there'll be an abstract class. I'm trying to think of an example, like prof like like uh, teacher. All right. Um, I, I guess you could code that a couple different ways. You could make a class for professor. And then have a subclass for, say, adjunct professor, you know, where an adjunct has some other things associated with them that a regular professor doesn't, or professor emeritus, or something like that. You could, you could do, I guess. Um, but I'll have to give that some thought and see what would be a good, uh, a good one. Because, again, you can inherit. You know, there's inheritance all over the place, right? There's inheritance in the framework, like we're inheriting the view, all right? Um, and there's also inheritance in the business logic when, you, when you're developing that. Um, for this class, I might want to look at inheriting and doing something based on um, something that's already in the framework. So again, make, make, make a, a custom view that, that we use in a few other things or, or whatever. I don't know. I have to give that some thought. Other questions? Comments?
Right. Wow. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, feel free to, if you, if you want, feel free to email me that and I can take a look at that and, and see what's up. All right, questions? All right, well, if there are other topics that you want to address, uh, again, I've had a request for um, more thread stuff and inheritance, but if there's anything else that you're particularly interested in, you know, just well, let me know. Okay. Well, but although it's, it's more academic because my, my unit doesn't support Bluetooth, but at work we're using Bluetooth okay. to communicate devices and information. Okay. Now I'll, I'll see if there's there's a place I, for that. I've already into it a little longer. Right. Alrighty. All right. You know, at uh, work, at work, we have uh, by developing Android app for us. Mm -hmm. Big, very, very big for a lot of the uh, all the tenants. And one consulting company, Hewitt, has done a lot of things. Right. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah, not all, not always a correlation, but you'd hope there would be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's that's true. You know, who who are the who are the experts for a field that is 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 so new? You know. Right. Communicates with the automobile, gets all the code. Right, right, right. And then all, all kinds of other data. Mm -hmm. So that you can display it. iPhone or whatever you have. Mm -hmm. Pretty complex data. Hmm. Interesting. All righty.